part of our parish evangelization commission's efforts to help us deepen our relationship with Jesus through prayer. This weekend, we welcome parishioner David Cosgrove to share his experience in conversational prayer. We invite you to consider the ways Jesus wants to interact with you if you engage him in this kind of personal prayer. Jesus can often surprise us. Welcome, David. Since that day in 1997, the desire in me to know to love Jesus has been insatiable. I've spent countless hours reading and studying scripture in one form or another. But it was in reading the lives of the saints that I came to recognize, through their example, the meaning of personal prayer. Every one of the saints to varying degrees had nurtured a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus. To them, Jesus was very much alive, so much of whom they would converse with frequently. They would speak to Jesus with every expectation that Jesus would answer them, either directly or through the actions of others. By their example, I not only saw that it was possible to engage God in this way, but that he also desires all of us to enter into this type of intimate, personal prayer with him. In order for me to enter into this closeness, I became aware of the obstacles in my life that prevented me from encountering Jesus in this way. I needed to re to remove these attachments to sin in my life and to allow Jesus to transform and to heal me. To do this, I frequently went to confession and attended Mass at least on a weekly basis. Next, I needed to learn how to pray to Jesus, fully trusting that Jesus would answer me in prayer. Over time, my prayer life became easier and more consistent. At first, I prayed only memorized and written prayers then one day I realized that not only have I been speaking to Jesus, but I have been listening to him as well. I offer two examples of my personal prayer to help, un help you understand what I mean. The first came about two years ago while I was praying right here in this church. Feeling exhausted and worn down, I was having a hard time clearing my mind in preparation for Mass. I remember looking up at the crucifix saying to Jesus that what I could really use right now is a hug. Believe me, this is not the type of sort of thing that I would typically ever ask for, but it just silently blurted out at me in prayer. As if on cue, I felt the tiny arms of my daughter Bridget embrace me in a hug. Immediately, all of the stress and anxiety I was feeling left my body, and my mind fell into a state of peace. And as I felt this peace wash over me, I bent down and kissed my daughter. I look, looking back up at the crucifix, I smiled and said to Jesus, Thank you. The Lord found a way to give me the physical embrace I prayed, while at the same time internally wiping away the emotional distress I was going through. I was able to see and appreciate Jesus through the action of my daughter as coming from Him, and not just dismissing it as coincidental. 
The second account happened over a longer period of time. It began when my wife and I decided to tell her home in Rhode Island and move to the South Shore. We weren't sure what town we should move to, so we made a promise to Jesus that we would trust him to put us in the town that he desires for us to live in. In return, we promised that we would become actively involved in that local parish. When we finally purchased our home in Duxbury, Jasmine and I got very involved right here at Holy Family. However, Jesus was asking me to consider doing more for him than just volunteering for my time. He wanted me to consider a vocation to the permanent diaconate. The timing of this request couldn't have been worse for me. I was starting a new business. My wife was returning to work full time. Finances were tight, and by the way, we were already volunteering a lot of our spare time at the parish, which ought to have been enough for Jesus, or so I thought. But it wasn't. Over a period of many months, the intensity of this conversation only increased. The more Jesus told me to trust him, the more resistant I became to the idea. Our conversation got so intense that at one point I remember telling Jesus, Stop it. How much more do you want from me? I have many more pressing needs I should focus my time on, like financial and family concerns. At which time I skewed out a long list of items that I needed to purchase for our home. I don't know why I listed those items. I wasn't petitioning, petitioning and help in getting them. I guess I just wanted him to know that I wasn't being unreasonable in putting off his request. But Jesus kept telling me to trust him, that he knows what's best for me. But I did not want to hear it. A couple weeks went by, but out of the blue, my neighbor Troy called and asked a favor. He and his wife were being relocated to Texas, and he needed my help to help pack up his belongings. Of course, I agreed and went over to his house right away. I found Troy in his garage, frantically trying to put, up, put all of his items into boxes. As I was helping, Troy would pick up one of his belongings and say, Hey Dave, you want this? I am not taking this with me. Sure enough, one by one, Troy pulled out of his garage every item on my list I used as a justification for not trusting Jesus. These were not run of the mill items, mind you. No, these were specific items like a gas powered weed whacker, a new snow blower, a mosquito catcher, I mean, this one was brand new, never even taken out of the box, and on and on and on. I stared at Troy in amazement, looking dumbfounded. I could barely speak, I just nodded. Yes, said Troy, saying, I'll take it. As I sat there, sat there staring at Troy, the words of Jesus came pouring into my ears. You can always trust me. A tremendous sense of love poured into my heart as well as a real sense of shame for my lack of trust I showed in it. In providing me with my insignificant material needs that I thought were necessary, Jesus demonstrated to me two things. First, that my trust in him still needs a lot of work. Secondly, to trust Jesus in all things, knowing that he will always lead me in the right direction. My conversations with Jesus about the permanent diaconate are still ongoing, and I would appreciate your prayers for my discernment. I hope my experiences give you the encouragement that it is possible to speak with God and to hear back from him, either directly or indirectly through the actions of others. Let us pray together that we can have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Thank you for your time. God bless.